He used to bug me though, man. I used to, I used to watch my dad and he would always know. And I didn't know how he knew. I'm like, how does he know that he knows that I know? What the fuck? <laughs> then I found out, I figured it out. Now I know how he knows. See, I was about 22 years old. I went home, I begged my father for the boat. We had a boat growing up. I said, dad, let me borrow the boat. My dad said, son, I'll go with you. And I said, no, I know. <laughs> and he goes, well, there's some things I got. I know! And he goes, if you're gonna take the boat, you have a trailer, you need to make wide turns. I fucking know that. <laughs> and I left, and three blocks later, yeah, I didn't make white turn. <laughs> and I busted a tire, turning on Aiken's loop. And who do you gotta call? Fucking Grandpa Joe. <laughs> and I called, and right away he answered the phone, but this time he went, already? <laughs> Before I could tell him what happened, he told me what happened. Let me guess. You didn't make white turns on Aiken's loop, and you busted a tire. I'm like, you're a dick! <laughs> I'm looking around for like spies or cameras. I'm like, Hello. He goes, I'm on my way. Before he hung up the phone, I heard him tell my mom, your son's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Some of you had a dad like mine, man. I panicked. His dads are dicks. I tried to change the tire before he got there so I could look at him in the face like a man and go, see, I fucking know. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. And my dad's dick, man. He wouldn't even tell me to move. He'd just move me. Get away from this shit. <laughs> He'd always give me some shitty job just to make me feel worse. Like holding the lug nuts. <laughs> you ever get the flashlight job? That's bullshit. <laughs> that job can't be done right. I don't care who you are. <laughs> My dad would try with me, man. He, I would watch him lose his shit. He'd be real patient at first. Okay, we're gonna be working right here. I need you to hold the light. He'd even give me an example. Can you do this? <laughs> oh. And the fun would begin. And I'd just watch him slowly. Mijo. You see where we're working? Right? I need you to, son of a bitch. Follow my fucking eyes! He'd, and then he would get so pissed, he'd grab my hand, borderline a boost. And then just give up on me all. Just go inside! Damn titty baby, go to your mother's. And you walk inside, mom's waiting for you. What happened? What did he do to you? He's a dick, that's what's up, he's a dick. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to him. No, ma! <laughs> she don't care, she'll go yell at him like he's a child. She's the only person in the house not afraid of him. She'll kick the door open, jump! <laughs> Put that down and look at me. <laughs> what did you do to him? <laughs> why, because he's in here crying, that's why. That's why he calls me a titty baby. <laughs> Go back out there with him. Uh-uh, you going. <laughs> he fixed that tire for me, and I still got to go. I look back on that day, and I think to myself, what a good man. He came, took care of all that bullshit, and I got to go have fun. But when you're young, you don't see things that way, do you? I didn't even go home that night. I went straight to my uncle's house. That's what your uncles are for, to be nice to you and shitty to their own kids. <laughs> everybody, everybody thought my dad was the best, man. All my friends, your dad's the shit. <laughs> you don't know him like I know him. <laughs> no, the other day he bought us beer. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, dad, did you buy my friends beer? Hey, they ain't my kids, I don't give a shit. And I made three bucks. So I went to my Uncle Oscar's house. My uncle could tell I was mad. Said, What's wrong? I hit him. What happened? He's a dick, he's a dick. I go, he goes, what happened? I go, I busted a tire. And my uncle goes, oh, turning on Aiken's loop? I go, how the fuck did you know that shit? He goes, ah, three weeks ago, me and your dad were going fishing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he busted a tire on Aiken's loop. I'm like, oh, I'm not dead. that's how he knows. Damn Grandpa Joe. When you have a boy, you have to walk him through every moment of his day. Your son will be in the bathtub, and you'll say to him, okay, get out of the tub and put on your pajamas, okay? He goes, okay. And then you leave his room and realize, oh, shit, I forgot to tell him to dry his body. <laughs> and you run back in, but it's too late. You have a soaking wet swamp thing jamming his little wet carcass into his Diego jammies. Two legs and one leg hole like an idiot. He don't fit me no more. <laughs> when I pick my son up from school, and I cannot emphasize to you enough, my boy is a special great guy. Sensitive, kind, caring, green belt, he can kick some ass. He's awesome. And when I pick him up from school, I'm always excited to see him at the end of the day, but when he gets in the truck, I'll go, how was your day? And he just looks up and goes, what? <laughs> but he says it like, how did you know it was day? <laughs> what did you do at school today? It's hard to say. <laughs> That's what he said to me once. What did you learn at school today? It's hard to say. <laughs> he can't do his seatbelt because he doesn't realize he's still wearing his fucking backpack. Oh, God. What'd you learn in school today? What? <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> and I don't understand why he's so defeated. Because every morning starts with such hope. I get up at about 6, I make my coffee. I wake him up at about 6.15. And every time I wake him up, he goes, <laughs> and he makes, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. He goes, is it morning time? I go, yes. And he goes, how many in a row is that? I'm like, well, who's giving LSD to my child? <laughs> They're all in a row, Stephen Hawking. Do you really want to go through this? How time operates? It's a human invention. We couldn't figure out how long it was until we saw the other caveman. So we created, ah, fuck it. It's morning time. <laughs> and we have breakfast and we drive to school together. And we have great conversations on the way to school. And now that he's eight, he sits in the front seat. And that's a big moment for a father and a son when you're no longer looking in that mirror, when he's just sitting right next to you. It's pretty cool. And it's also very odd because the only time there's a guy in that seat in my truck, we're usually sharing a joint. <laughs> either my wife or me and a buddy on the way to a Dodger game, like, yeah, curse you. And I look over and there's eight-year-old, and I'm like, there's no way he's holding, right? <laughs> and I just keep looking at his backpack, so many zippers. <laughs> we get to school, and he gets out of the truck. We kiss on the mouth, big hug. Listen, this is a kid that doesn't care what his friends see. A lot of kids will make you drop them off around the corner. They don't want to be seen with you. Me and my son, we kiss, we hug. He gets out of the truck, and every morning he takes off, and I go, hey, wait a minute. And he looks at me, and I go, be a leader today. Be a leader, okay? He goes, I will, Daddy. And he fucking <laughs> runs into school <laughs> like he's in a Rocky movie. Rising up, back on the streets. Private school took my chances, and I watch him run into school. Six hours later, a young John McCain gets into my truck. I don't know what happened. He comes out of school, he's super skinny. He's got a hole in his shirt that I know he put there himself. <laughs> He's covered in ink, his hair's all fucked up, big purple circles under his eyes. The sun is kicking his ass. <laughs> and he's like nervous as to whether or not he should get in the truck with me. He's like, ah. <laughs> and then he gets in and I go, how was your day? What? <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> What's going on in there? 
You could be more authoritative with boys. If you have like four boys, you can go, hey, all you guys, out! Get out of the house! Don't even come back in until I call you. I'm not so mad at you, right now. And they'll leave. They don't even know they're in trouble. They're like, okay. <laughs> the baby is naked. You're so angry, you let a naked baby walk out of your house. <laughs> and you're like, I should put some clothes on. Like, Fuck him. <laughs> Two hours go by, you go, all right, guys, bring it in. And here comes your little troop up the street. It looks like they're coming back from a Civil War reenactment. <laughs> Boys have an amazing ability to get into shit you never knew you could get into. They're all soaking wet from here down. Your oldest son is holding dog shit in his hands, making a dog shit snowball. The baby's dragging a prosthetic leg up the street. Don't ask them where they were, because they don't know. They're dumb. Try that with four girls. It ain't gonna work out so good. All four of you little ladies, get out of the house and don't come back in until I call you. They'll vote as a block. They'll get together and go, why don't you get out of the house? <laughs> we all voted and you're the least popular person in it. <laughs> and they're right. Damn, man, on Easter, my dad would take her to the park to go look for other people's eggs. <laughs> Those kids will be upset. Those are our eggs. No, they're not. We found them. <laughs> my dad, he used to walk around the whole neighborhood and collect old furniture and bring it home and fix it like MacGyver with duct tape. <laughs> One time, he brought a television home. I said, damn, that TV got 500 channels. When I got older, it didn't have 500 channels. It was a knob from the oven. <laughs> My favorite channel was 300 degrees. <laughs> we used to watch the Dukes of Hazzard on Channel Broil. <laughs> it was a hot show. Oh, man, I'm not feeling too good right now because my mom and dad are getting a divorce. And I'm scared because I don't know who am I gonna live with now. <laughs> There's gonna be a custody battle. <laughs> because neither one of them want me. I love my dad, man. He used to be a professional wrestler in Mexico. It was cool growing up with him because when he hit us, he didn't really hit us. <laughs> He'd be like, Placate, cabrón. I'm like, Grandma, touch my hand. <laughs> Sometimes my son shows up too early, man. Like around noon. <laughs> my mom lets him in my room. My son is right in my ear, trying to wake me up. Daddy, I want cereal. <laughs> Mom, Mom, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> he goes to the other side. I want cereal. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm having this crazy dream. There's some hot chick jumping on top of me. I'm like, you like that? She said, I want cereal. <laughs> I want cereal, Dad. Cereal's hot. <laughs> oh, it's tough, man. My son flipped me off. He gave me the, this sign, because I bought him the wrong Happy Meal. <laughs> Damn, spoiled little kid. He like flipping me off. Hello, Dad, I'm a boy. This is a Shrek princess! I'm a boy! We should go back! You're crazy! That might work on your stepdad, mijo, but not with me, man. I have nothing to prove here. I went back to McDonald's for him. I wasn't ready to go back inside. 
I wasn't ready to go back inside the first time I went there. <laughs> I'm a drive through guy. I have a drive through face, drive through clothes. <laughs> Here I am standing in line McDonald's now with sweats with no underwear on. <laughs> the tightest football jersey you've ever seen. <laughs> and my hair like Justin Bieber. <laughs> Here we go. Um, can I, can I have a boy toy? <laughs> One Shrek. I told my dad that story. He said, damn, what a loser. You went back? <laughs> and you wasted gas? See, my dad would never do that for me. My dad would drive into McDonald's, would get excited, McDonald's! <laughs> then he'll drive out the other side. <laughs> he wasn't really going to McDonald's. He just didn't want to wait for the red light. <laughs> with expired tags. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're in the back, excited, McDonald's! <laughs> My little brother, you think daddy's gonna go back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to Disneyland. <laughs> oh man, my son's in love right now with a little cougar. <laughs> He's 12, she's 15. <laughs> He's all in love right now. Saving up money to buy her a Louis Vuitton purse. <laughs> so his mom tells me to talk to him. Tell him what I know about life. What the hell do I know? <laughs> I see my kid on Saturdays. <laughs> she asked me right in front of him. Tell him something, tell him what you know. Um, listen, um, the first girl you fall in love with, um, later in life, she ain't gonna be nothing to you. <laughs> you don't believe me? Ask, um... <laughs> ask your mom right here. <laughs> she high-fives me. And there's no dwarves in my family at all. I am the only one, so they weren't expecting it. So, like, my dad is this really athletic dude, tall athletic dude, and he thought his, you know, his wife was gonna give birth to a football player. Instead, she shot out a football. And <laughs> you gotta ask yourself, what would you do in that situation? What would you do? If you found out your child was a little bit different, he wasn't gonna be like all the other kids, what would you do? How would you react if you knew for a fact your son was guaranteed to be bullied when he got to school? Hopefully, you do what my dad did. He bullied me first. <laughs> But he did it in a very awesome way. He would make fun of me, and he would tell me, like, all right, hit me back. Hit me back with something. That's what you're going to do. Some kid's going to come up to you. He's going to make fun of you. What are you going to do? You're going to cry about it? No, not my son. You're going to make him regret saying that to you. You're going to make him cry about it. That's what you're going to do. So he molded me. He trained me. He prepared me like Yoda and Luke Skywalker. The sizes were reversed, but you get the idea. So by the time I got to kindergarten, I was a trained verbal assassin. I walked into kindergarten with some swag, like, I hope someone fucks with me today. <laughs> and someone did. Someone did fuck with me. I will never forget this. First day of school, we're all lined up, right? And we're, we're taking roll. This kid runs out of line in front of the entire class, runs right up to me, points his finger in my face, and goes, ha ha, you're little. I looked at him and went, ha ha, your mom doesn't live with your dad anymore. <laughs> Tears, tears, tears. I live in California. I had a 50-50 shot of getting that one right. So he starts crying. I get sent to the principal's office. I'm sitting there in the office. It's me, it's the principal, it's the kid. Kid's still crying because he's a bitch. And then the principal looks at me and goes, I can't believe you made him cry. I'm calling your father. Do it. 
No, Roy, don't do it. So he gets the phone out. He calls my dad, gets my dad out of work, and says, Mr. Williams, I'm here with your son, Brad. He was in my office today because he made another little boy cry at school. What do you have to say about that? Here's what my dad said. He goes, did he start it or did he finish it? <laughs> dad. I see. I see the old school parents clapping right now because you know what that means. Some of the younger parents are like, what, what are you talking about? Did he start or did he finish it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, bad. Both children made fun of each other. They should both be punished equally. They should be put in timeout. They should put in timeout, Brad. Timeout means they can't use their Xbox for three minutes. It's not good. <laughs> They'll think about what they did, and then, and then they'll, they'll be done, and they'll want to learn something, and they'll want to go outside. Now, if, before they go outside, though, it's very scary outside. So you want to dip your child in a big vat of Purell. Just dip them in that Purell. So there's no germs on them, but, you know, they could fall. So you want to be prepared for that. So you put a helmet on them. You put uh, some uh, wrist pads, some elbow pads, some knee pads. And then if they play competitive sports, even if they get last place, you can't hurt their self-esteem. So if they get last place, you give them a three-foot-tall trophy, and at the bottom of it, it says, you're special. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Stop it. Stop it. That's not what you do. Did you start it or did you finish it? Because you're never, ever, ever supposed to start a fight. But if you're in one, you better damn well finish that thing. That's the rule. If you start, if you start a fight, you're an asshole. If you finish it, you're a goddamn hero. That's the difference. So my dad says that to him, and the principal goes, well, to be honest with you, he finished it. Then my dad says this on the speakerphone. He goes, well, problem with your school is not my son. Problem with your school is the other kid's a pussy. Click. <laughs> and he's like, Woo! I'm dancing around the office. That's my dad. That's my dad. And then I looked at the other kid. I'm like, you see, that's what a father does. You would have no idea what a father does. <laughs> Finish him. Dad was proud of me that day. I got Chuck E. Cheese that day. Awesome. Now, don't think that just because I had that moment that my parents' job was done. Because if you're a parent, you know. You never stop being a parent, so my dad never stopped fucking with me, okay? <laughs> never. He even had to discipline me in a creative way. Because, like, he's old school. He wanted to discipline me because I would mess up, just like any kid messes up. And my dad, like, he wanted to hit me, but you can't. Punch a dwarf. No, that's, that's 12 years bad luck. Like, you're not doing that. So my dad never hit me. Here's what he would do. When I would mess up, my dad would pick me up, put me on a counter, and then leave. Some of you get it. Some of you are like, what's the big deal? Well, five foot counter, two foot human. Unless you leave a parachute, not going anywhere for a while. One time at Christmas, I knocked over the Christmas tree. Dad got mad, picked me up, put me on the counter, called in my sister, was like, hey, Katie, 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 come here. Check it out, look what I got. Elf on a shelf. <laughs> 16th birthday. My dad wakes me up on my birthday. Happy birthday, son. I bought you a car. Yeah. I run downstairs, run to the kitchen, get to the garage, open it up. Fisher Price Power Wheels sitting right there in the damn garage. <laughs> block and a half away from school. I still drove that thing to school. I had the first electric car. I was a visionary. Now I tell those stories about my father and a lot of you have the appropriate reaction. You laugh. Some of you, some of you get that look and I know that look. I, t I say those stories and you're like, oh, Brad, that's, that's so sad. Your father made fun of you. What do you think that did to you, Brad? Made me a man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut up. I thank God every day that my dad made fun of me. I'm so thankful that he put a little adversity in my life. That way, I knew how to conquer adversity later. You have to ask yourself one question. Who do you want your kid to be? Do you want your kid to be ready for the world that is or the world that should be? Now, in the world it should be, there should be no murder. There should be no rape. There should be no ISIS. There should be no Justin Bieber. <laughs> but that's not the world we live in. We live in a world where, unfortunately, all those things do exist. 
So who do you want your kid to be? Do you want your kid to be the person that's never had anything go wrong for them ever? Smooth sailing the entire way, never had anything wrong, never got hurt, never got a bruise, just run down the street every day, just sunshine and lollipops and... <laughs> no, you don't want that kid. Because when something does happen to that kid, and it will, that kid's not gonna know what to do. Pe people wanna protect their children from life. And to the, some extent, you have to do that, but you have to let a little in because you're never gonna be able to protect them forever. Life, ladies and gentlemen, has an undefeated record. No one has gone through this thing unscathed. No one. My family got ours about two years ago. Uh, two years ago, my dad came home and announced to the family that he had skin cancer. And uh, we knew as a family, like, all right, we gotta deal with this. And we started dealing with it. And then when my dad had to have part of his face removed for plastic surgery and try to get that cancer off his face, that didn't work. And we had to regroup. Then when he went through radiation treatment, that didn't work. We had to regroup. Then he had to go through chemotherapy. And I had to watch the man who raised me, the man who I love more than anything in this world, wither away to almost nothing. But I was never truly scared because my dad raised me to never fear anything in this world more than him. <laughs> I knew nothing on this planet was scarier than my dad. Nothing is more powerful than my dad. I know this, my sister knows this, and now cancer knows it because he beat that son of a bitch. You wanna know how he did it? Ask him, because my father is sitting right here in the second row. Thank you. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching me never to quit. Thank you for teaching me to be a man and hopefully be the man that you can be proud of. And now it is my dream, it is my goal to one day have a son. Don't get me wrong, he's gonna be taller than me. That scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> but one day I wanna have that moment with my son where we're arguing just like any father and son does. And we're having that moment and we're arguing and we're getting pissed off. It happens in every household. It is my dream that one day my son will look down at me and get mad at me and pick me up and put me on a counter and be like, Grandpa taught me that one, bitch. Thank you guys very much for being a part of this.